G'day One More Fly Squad, welcome back to another Thursday trip report. Today I'm flying from Paris to Hong Kong via Rome and Abu Dhabi. From Paris to Rome I flew Alitalia A320 economy class and from Rome to Abu Dhabi I flew Etihad 787. For those two trip reports you'll find a link in the description down below. For this trip report I'm going to fly the Etihad 787-9 from Abu Dhabi to Hong Kong. Now let's jump straight to Abu Dhabi airport. G'day One Watt Flyers squad, welcome back to another Thursday trip report. I'm at Abu Dhabi airport, I just landed uh, from Rome, Leonardo da Vinci airport on board Etihad 787. Now I'm connecting through another Etihad 787 to Hong Kong. First you'll have to go through this security lane, it's quite long but very fast moving. Virgin Australia is a partner airline with Etihad. As a gold member with Virgin, I have access to the Plaza Premium Arim Lounge before my Etihad flight. The lounge is super tiny and quite crowded. Upstairs, you'll find the dining area and also the shower rooms. Then in upstairs, you'll find a bar. I'll show you the food just before I do my shower room tour. Hello and welcome to the shower room in Plaza Premium Abu Dhabi Airport. This is a quick shower room tour. Pretty nice here. You've got amenities in that plastic container. Now let's move in into the uh, shower space. You've got a normal shower head and a overhead shower head. And that's the um, shower products we've got. So I just took my shower and I just want to quickly say that it's a pretty good experience, you know, a shower between flights, but there's a problem and it's that there's not enough space to put your own belongings. So you either put it on your toilet seat, on the basin or on the floor. Now let's move on to the dining area. So here's the salad area. Here's the bakery and dessert area. For the hot food, we've got fish and chicken. We've also got rice. This is beef with okra. Pretty good selection, I'd say. So here's my dinner. I'm not having a lot of food here because on the previous flight and in the lounge in Rome, I had a lot of food. And later on, on the flight to Hong Kong, I'll get more food. Do you ever pack an extra shirt to get changed between flights? Let me know in the comment down below. So here's a better view of the downstairs and upstairs. So the bar downstairs, middle floor, there's a sitting area. Upstairs, dining area, toilet and shower rooms. The flight display board says go to gate for my flight, so I'm going to my gate. The Plaza Premium Hour Room Lounge is located in Terminal 1. My flight to Hong Kong is departing from Terminal 3. It's about a 5 minutes walk to Terminal 3 and then you'll arrive at this big shopping area. Then it's another 10 minutes walk to my gate. It's now ready for boarding the gate number 48. Families travel to children, those who need to. Sure, but, uh, they sent the medicine already by someone? It takes time to be honest with you. Honestly, it takes time. Uh, if you'd like, you can just quickly run up to the business class now. Thank you. And uh, the game This is our aircraft to Hong Kong today. A three year old Etihad Boeing 787 9 Alpha 6 Bravo Limo Hotel. It's wearing the Truce Italy livery. Remember, smoking, including days of light, as much as we see, it is not allowed anywhere on board, including the toilets. Thank you. This is my seat, 29K. This 787 economy class configuration is 333. Every seat is about 17 inches wide, and your seat pitch or leg room is about 31 inches. There's a pillow and a blanket on every seat. I will now quickly show you the seat features. 
You've got a touchscreen TV, it's adjustable. You've got a cut hook and a power socket. Here's the TV remote. Headphone jack on the other side. Here's a cup holder. The tray table can be folded in half and also it can be moved back and forth. Down here's the seat pocket. There are two extra pouches for greater storage. Leg room, 31 inches is adequate for this flight. Your headrest is fixed on one side, the other side is adjustable. At the very moment I got all three seats to myself. Fingers crossed, there's no more butters coming. Eventually the middle seat was left empty, but there was someone at the aisle seat. The cabin crew are now preparing the cabin for takeoff. For highly trained cabin crew, under the leadership of cabin manager Nadia, and are here to ensure safety and well being. Our flight time today is 6 hours and 25 minutes, and we shall be cruising at a final cruising altitude of 41,000 feet above mean sea level. Uh, the weather on route is forecasted to be generally good. Uh, we do expect a mild weather on certain sections of the route. As of such, we would recommend to keep our seatbelts loosely fastened at all times while seated. I shall get back to you just prior to descending to uh, Hong Kong, inshallah, with an updated route time as well as the latest weather report. Meanwhile, please sit back, relax, and enjoy our hospitality and flight services. Thank you. We've been hit by a short delay. A friendly cabin crew is now handing out headphones for economy class. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ashley. I'm your cabin senior on this flight. Please. The pillow and blanket aren't the best quality for economy class. I might use this time to quickly show you the entertainment system. So here's the beautiful Hong Kong, Victoria Harbour. Let's check out the movies. The touchscreen is very responsive to my fingers. There's quite a lot of movies to choose from, which is nice. Annabelle is a great movie. Imagine watching it alone in a first class suite. Ugh. Now let's move on to the flight map. The system is not interactive, so there are multiple slides changing slowly. There's a menu in a seat pocket and there's also one in your TV screen. You have to pay for most of the items here. Because of the delay, the cabin crew came around the cabin to give out water. Now the captain will update us about the delay. The uh, stop time uh for the part, apply it to uh, Muscat airspace. As of such, uh, we expect uh, to push back in about 10 minutes from now. Uh, we thank you for your patience. The seat belt must be fastened whenever the fastened seat belt sign is eliminated. You feel that in the hazard, and it's a happy shot to adjust for the strap. Now put on your headphone for this wonderful engine startup.
there's a gorgeous Etihad A380 right there. I flew that aircraft to Paris in business class earlier this month. I haven't uploaded the trip report for that flight yet, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button as well, so you won't miss out when I upload it. Very shortly after takeoff, our wonderful cabin crew starts at their service. So here's my dinner. It's Thai green curry with rice. The other option is lamb with rice. I always say that Etihad has really good food no matter what class you're in, but this curry rice was really inadequate. There's too much capsicum and other vegetables you don't normally see in curry. I opted for orange juice, there's biscuits and cheese, bread and butter, a water cutlet and I ordered a soda water. The sides are really good, the curry, meh. This is the only meal on board this flight. I flew the same flight exactly a year ago, in January 2019, they gave out sandwich before landing. In 2020, you only get a drink before landing. I'm not drunk. It's just very bumpy. Hello and welcome on board Etihad 787-9 Economy Class Lavatory. This is a quick lavatory tour. You've got the sink there. You've got paper cups if you want to 
uh, wash your mouth. The wallpaper here is very beautiful. The toilet seat. You've got quite a good amount of space to move around. You've got one coat hook and a second coat hook. Our flight today is about half full. They've just turned on a very little mood lighting and now I'm gonna go to sleep. About 90 minutes before landing, they switched on their cabin light and gave out hot beverages. I opted for an English tea. Our cabin crew are now handing out Hong Kong arrival cards. Expecting our arrival time at uh, 9.42 uh, Hong Kong local time. We are expecting our arrival five to be on the schedule because it's not time for any part of Hong Kong. And what's up that was slightly late. If you want to set to watch the actual local time in Hong Kong, it's just 9 o'clock. Actually, probably at 10 o'clock. Very poor to start the the early morning clear sky and plus 17 degrees off center field. Once again, uh, we have the database and the entire thing of flying with us tonight and we wish you passes to Hong Kong for a safe home journey. By the way, there is Wi-Fi on board this flight, you'll have to pay for internet access. 6 US dollars for 50 megabyte, 16 dollars for 150 megabyte, and the most expensive you can pay for is 30 US dollars for 300 megabytes. And if you are still hungry after that dinner, you can pay for extra snacks and drinks. Here's the menu. It's funny how every country has different focus on their custom regulation. For example, in Hong Kong, it's about how much money you can bring in. In Australia, it's about the agriculture. In the UK, they don't care. We're soon going to land into Hong Kong Chalap Kok International Airport, so let's quickly conclude this trip report with Ed Sihard right here, right now. First of all, the seat is quite comfortable, despite the just average legroom. There's plenty of seat features. I like how the power socket is right in front of you, instead of underneath your seat. The headrest, it's quite controversial, I think. I do like it folded during the flight sometimes, but not all the time. During the delay, the copper crew kept us very updated. The cabin crew also gave us water during that delay, which was excellent. There's plenty of stuff to watch on that TV, which is good. The Thai green curry rice was really, really bad. However, the bread and also the biscuits and cheese were pretty good. Uh, a thumbs down definitely for the arrival meal. It's non-existing right now. Another thumbs down for the onboard menu. I'm happy for them to charge for some more premium items, 
for example Starbucks coffees, given that other coffee is free of charge. But I don't like the fact that they're charging for sparkling water and many other snacks, especially that they're not giving out a second meal now on this flight. For the cabin crew service, I really liked the junior cabin crew on this flight, they were all very friendly and nice to us. I didn't really like one of the senior cabin crew though. I'll continue my story after this announcement. So for that senior cabin crew, after I sat down at my seat very early during the boarding process, I put a backpack on the floor but not exactly underneath the seat in front of me because I wanted to take out something and put in something. She walked past and very rudely she said, put it in the seat underneath that seat please. Her attitude was very bad and also it was very early during the boarding process like only about 50 people got onto the plane. She can chill. Furthermore, a lot of people moved to the economy space seats. Those economy space seats offer more leg room and it's payable. So it's understandable that the senior cabin crew get them to get back to their ordinary seat. But again, she was really rude to those passengers. She said, you have to leave unless you pay. Now, a better way to say that would be, sorry sir or madam, unfortunately those seats offer extra leg room. So if you want to sit here, you'll have to pay extra for that. So would you mind to move back to the seat as stated on your boarding pass? Instead of, you have to leave unless you pay. Anyway, it was just one very cabin crew who was that annoying and rude. All the other cabin crew were all very friendly and nice and charming. So that's it for the conclusion today. For your information, I paid 12,000 Hong Kong dollars for this return flight from Hong Kong to Europe. On the way to Europe, I was in business class. On the way back, I was in economy. Thanks very much for watching. And here we are, one what flash squad. You can use this special hashtag to share your journey with me on Instagram. And please don't forget to like this video, comment down below, and share this video with your aviation friends. Previously, only about 17% of my audience have subscribed to my channel. This number has since increased to 30%, which is amazing. However, that also means that it's time for me to reach more newer audience. And you can really help by liking this video because YouTube would think that you like this video so that other people might also like this video and they will suggest this video on other people's homepage. Thanks very much for your support. You can add me on Snapchat, follow me on Instagram, follow and like me on Facebook. I update on those social media very often. Thanks again and I'll see you again next Thursday, 12 p.m. Hong Kong time for a new trip report. Bye bye.
purchasing the flight Etihad Airways, the national airline of the UAE. It has been our pleasure taking care of you today. Thank you. Good day, One What Fly Squad. Thanks for watching the uh, Airty Heart Trot Report. And now I'm going to do the Q&A. The first question, uh, they're all from Instagram today. And the first one's from CSTSE. How can I travel as much as like you? Uh, how can I travel as much as you? Uh, I guess if you study abroad, you work abroad, you live abroad, and you always go back to your home country, that are the three main reasons you can travel a lot. Uh, go on holidays a lot, that's another reason, but that's not my reason. Um, the second question I've got is from Fan Hoang Ang, sorry if, sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, what major are you taking in college? Uh, so I assume college as in university. Uh, I don't know what a major is. Uh, we don't have a major or minor here, so uh, the program I'm doing, it's called Aviation Management. And under that Aviation Management program, uh, we've got courses. Uh, the courses change every semester. Uh, this semester, I've got Economics, Airline Marketing, Aviation Law and Human Factors. The final question from Gavin Sim. Gavin Sim. How much do you rate uni life? Uh, one. Uh, I'll give you a nine if it was last year, but one this year. I really hate uh, Zoom. It's annoying. I'm actually now spending more time on uni compared to face-to-face uh, -face lessons, uh, lectures and tutorials. I miss going on campus. Uh, I miss seeing people in general. Uh, but yeah, uni is quite good because holidays are longer, uh, you have fewer assignments and also uh, very likely if you study in Australia, you get more days off. So for example, this semester I've got Monday, Friday off. So I've only got classes from Tuesday to Thursday. Um, last year I've got Friday off, which is amazing. Uh, amazing so that's it for the q a today i hope that you enjoyed watching this one and also for the trip report and i hope to see you again next thursday 12 p.m hong kong time bye bye ladies and gentlemen welcome to boston for your safety please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned off